What you're about to watch is the entirety of an Instagram Live video session that I did while carving these little mini carvings. I was just relaxing, carving, hanging out with people, answering questions. I did my best to answer in complete sentences and read the questions as they were being asked, but if something doesn't make sense, my apologies. Hello, hello. Hey, Mark. We're going to a little, uh, little whale shark carving today. I've got a lot, of, a lot of little carvings that I'm going with. I'm probably halfway through these at the moment. I've got about 25 to 30 of them carved. And I've got about 25 left to go. Getting a feel of the wood before I go into some small detail areas. Each one of these little wood pieces is unique because the wood is kind of acts differently with each piece. So I just need to know how that wood's going to act before I go into one of the. It is a little whale shark. Yes. I didn't see who asked that, but yes, it is. One week ago, I'm going to take a break from small pieces. Um, did I say that? It was probably after, uh, after these. I know people keep asking for them though, so I might, I might keep doing them. I do want to start on, I got a couple other ideas floating around in my head. One of them is small pieces-ish. Um, doing a, uh, a big print with a lot of little small pieces into it. Cause these are all carved and painted pieces and the big print would be something that I could actually print on paper or t-shirts, but then it would have just a handful of small carvings on it that would be printed as a collection. So I might start on something like that next week. We'll see. Everything's so weird and up in the air right now, it's hard to plan what you're going to do because everything's so fluid and nothing's the same. So. But last week I did the set of 50 of these and then I put them all up for sale. And they all went except for one, which is awesome. Thank you. But I also did a set of uh, like tiny commissions for the people that missed out on the one they had their eye on. And that's where most of these are coming from. I got, I had 37 commissions, I think. Um, and I sketched out a handful more because I had blank pieces on the wood that I was drawing them on. So I sketched out, I think, 37 commissions and I got 16 pieces that are unaccounted for in this upcoming set of 53 total. So that's where I'm at with these tiny pieces. Is anybody in here waiting for one? Are they, uh, did, were you one of the people who ordered one of the commission pieces?
This one's going to be fun. And by fun, I mean challenging. <laughs> uh, because it's got all these little circles in it. There's little whale shark spots. Perhaps I saw one or two carved. Yeah, Mark, I've got uh, three owls that I've got to work on. One of them is carved already, and it's right here. And then the other two are yet to be carved. But you will be getting two of those owls. Maybe I'll do an owl next. Mike Lowry's here. Hey, Mike. Don't you have a live feed to do in like three minutes? So here's the fun part, going all around these little circles. And the third, um, the, the third owl is going to someone else. Someone else requested an owl. I forget who that other person was. Will be a lot of whale spots, yeah. Yeah. It will be, but it's just kind of carving around like in a maze. And the good part about it is if I carve out the outlines first, then I can clear them out kind of easily. Where if I, if I carve the insides of the circles out first, it would be a little bit challenging to get to the outside so perfectly. It's easier to do small areas insides last. It's Friday now, which is kind of exciting because I kind of, uh, I'm still trying to keep to like a normal schedule. Um, let's see, like, like filling something in with a marker, you do the edges first, you don't hit them. Um, kind of. There's just more to here. I'll, I'll do, I'll do one on the inside right now. So you can kind of see what I mean. So I've got like the outside of this circle on the nose already defined. So basically with this mark, the grain is going this way. I'm pretty much parallel with it. So I want to go directly against the grain and go in both directions. And then I can thin these lines out pretty much as, as needed after I do that. So it happens quite easily once I have the outside of it um, defined and then I can use the inside to define the outside more. I always describe this as um, kind of like uh, drawing on Illustrator. If you want to draw like, a, like a, a line with varying thickness you have to pretty much trace the line either side, the, the left side and the right side and then just kind of follow it down. This is kind of the same thing. You have to to find the negative space. And 
and I got Marty coming. I got someone texting me, and I've got Marty coming to say hi too. So you're probably gonna see a little cat shadow walking in, and you may see a tail going under the camera. That's you. That's the. That's actually really funny. The the shadow of the tail wagon as she hits me in the head with it. Marty, you're blocking my light. Hola, Brazil. All right, I think it's a bigger tool to get out this big area in here. You keep hitting me in the head. She says, hi, Mark. She doesn't really, she's got her back towards me. So <laughs> she doesn't say a whole lot. She just likes to be around. I don't even know what she's up to right now. She's not even looking at me. Usually she'll come up here and like demand me to pet her. But right now she's, she came up here to like look out the window, but the desk really isn't that close to a window. What you doing? <laughs> Just little tail here. Little tail. Doot doot doot. You can't see it. She's gone. Now she's closer to the window that she was looking out. Have I ever slipped doing it? Yeah. Um, I have, it's, I'm trying to look for an example. It's, it's, it hasn't happened in a, in today. It hasn't happened today. But every now and then I'll slip and go a little bit further than I wanted to carve or hit my finger and carve myself. But you can see um, that I've got two, two hands on the tool at all time. And one of them is pushing forward and the other one is pushing back against the tool so I don't slip. And that's why I hold the tool the way I do. Do you like turtles? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, I like drawing turtles. I like to look at turtles if they're around. But I don't like to have turtle pets or anything. But yeah, turtles are cool. I like drawing them. There are no turtles in this set. Need a lot of practice to make it look easy. Yeah, so I've been carving a while. Uh, I started carving about 2008 maybe so I'm going on like 12 years of carving and I'm going on 10 years of all I do is carve I've been a full-time artist since 2011 And I carve most days. Not every day. Sometimes I print and do other things. Hello, artsy heart. Is it easy to learn? Um, 
I mean, the concept's pretty easy. Depends on where you want to get with it, if it's easy. I wouldn't say it's, like, simple. But... It's a lot of work. But I wouldn't call it easy. It just takes a lot of work. All right, now to carve out the middle of the little spots. Like I said, the grain of the wood is pretty much going diagonally through this piece. And to do the spots, you see how it kind of chips away when I go uh, completely against the grain? In most cases, not all the time, but it just kind of chips away. That's why I'm going against the grain that way, because I just want it to chip away. I don't want it to peel. If I was going with the grain, in some situations I have to, I'll get out my X-Acto knife. So I stop before it peels away something I want it to. Are you doing a wood or lino? I have my tra I have my t ba 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 ba. Slow down. Are you doing on wood or lino? I have tried my hand over lino. This is wood, this is birch. Birch wood. I can show you on the back. It's wood. You see the wood grain. The, the surface also has texture too, but since that's painted black, it's a lot harder to see on camera. This one I kind of have to go carefully. Do you prefer wood? Um, I I like all materials for different reasons and different projects. Um, I use linoleum occasionally. I use linoleum when I am working. Um, I'm making small prints, and I'm using my uh, little. I have a. Adana 8x5 printer printing press that makes it easy to pull large editions and I use linoleum when I'm working on that because it comes in type high and it works well with that press um, but wood is my preference for sure do you teach um, not formally not formally I just make. All right, so this little whale shark is done. Let's see, I'll put him right there for you guys. Is Mark still in here? Look at the little whale shark. Because if Mark's still here, I'll work on an owl. Let me find one. Where is an owl? There we go. All right, Mark, an owl coming up. This is a little flying guy. All right. Go around the eye. 
In Indonesia, where I live, a bunch of artists crafting wood like you, but few have applied on shirts. Yeah. Wood Woodcuts are very uh, common practice. And it's not super strange to do them on shirts. I'm not the first, and I'm not the last, I'm sure. But there are easier and cheaper ways to print t-shirts and that's probably that, that might be a factor on why not a lot of people in your area do it it's kind of a novelty I've never been to Bali How do you transfer the picture onto the block? Well, for these specifically, these were drawn directly onto the block. I don't, uh, there's no transfer process on here. I sketch directly on the block and then I trace it. Um, and then, I, I mean trace it. I sketch directly on the block for these and then I uh, reinforce that with a, that pencil sketch with a Sharpie. Um, so that's how, what the process is for these ones. But for larger pieces, I do transfer them on the block and I use a projector, just a digital projector to do that. This one I spray painted a little black, a little too black. Which is which is good and, and then it makes it harder to see the drawing, but it's good because it kind of gives me a little bit more freedom in the carving. And I can see my, my mark making a little bit better, which is also nice. So it's not a bad thing, it's just a different thing. I just worked slightly differently differently with it. All right, so this got a straight edge right here. I do that so it doesn't peel. And it stops right at that point. Another little eyebrow piece. I'm sure those have a name. Great face. You ever do any metal work or engraving? Um, I have done engraving in the past um, when I was an undergraduate, but it's been a long time since then. And I liked it okay. But it's complete, it's, it is completely different than this. The mark making is a lot more fine And it's a lot more linear based rather than, I don't know, shape based. Because you're not really taking out large chunks at a time, you're taking out line work. Which is fine, but I think this is, this, uh, the reason I, I gravitated towards woodblock printing is because it's shape based and not line based. I have a tendency to use a lot of line work and I need, I think my work needs a little bit of texture, which woodblock gives me. My line work is very clean. Always, always, all right, always cool to see your works. Love the style. Thank you. How do you transfer to the line now? Actually, I just talked about this. You must be new here, which is fine. I'll say it again. This this one I sketched directly upon the block to make these, so there's no transferring with involved with these. But with other pieces, um, I'll use a digital projector. Thumbs up. 
Oh yeah, the cool kids are here. Love the style. Thank you. All right, furry head. All the thumbs up. What kind of paint do you use to black wash the wood? Love your work. Thank you. Um, this, I just use spray paint, just the cheapest spray paint that you can find. And I say the cheapest spray paint you can find. Um, I was just saying where, what my drawing was. That, so you can see through it. The expensive spray paint generally isn't transparent. The spray paint that I use is literally 97 cents a can. I use more, I've used better spray paint for other projects, but for this cheapest spray paint, the cheaper the spray paint, the better. You know where just where to put him? Yay. Mark, uh, you probably have a larger collection of my work than I do at this point. Or, or you're getting close, and I appreciate it. At one point I was I was uh, trying to keep like a mental track of all the pieces you had, but it's impossible for me at this point. Will these have hangers? Um, I put a, I do a little drill hole in the back so you can um, hang it from a nail. But it'll just you can just hang it from a nail. They're kind of too small for hangers. The hangers are bigger than some of these. What do you do with the small pieces after they're finished? Um, these ones I sell just as is. I paint them and I ink them and then I put them up for sale. This one specifically is though is is Mark's. I I did some small commissions, tiny commissions last week and I'm working through that pile of commissions at the moment. And that's what these pieces are. So this one, I will paint it and then ink it and then ship it to Mark. And then the other, some of the other ones are going to other people. And so that's that's what's going on with these specifically. OK. 
Okay. I don't like beads in here. Get rid of those. Same here. Do you still make enamel pins? I've been getting that question a lot, and the answer is I want to, yes. Um, but with the weirdness going on, I don't know. Should I? All, all like my festivals and all my shows have been canceled, and that's where I would sell them the most. So, I'm think I don't know. The answer is I don't know if I'll be making them soon. But I have in the past, and I want to in the future. But the world's in such a weird place right now. That I don't know what to do. Everything the past two or three weeks, maybe even longer, probably the past month, everything I've been doing for the past month or so has been with supplies that I already own, that are already in my house. Um, just because, yeah, we haven't really left the house to go do a whole lot, haven't really left to go supply shopping to buy paint and I had so much little pieces of scrap wood laying around that these tiny carvings made a lot of sense to start making Yeah, so I should I should keep moving and just kind of. Well, that's what I've been trying to do, but just, but also limiting the new things that come into the house. For obvious reasons. Carves a little belly. I like the little doodle things you do. Thank you. Would these little these little wood carvings would be considered little doodle things? I think so. I would consider them doodles. All right. So I want to keep this little line under the belly intact. I'm going to come against it here. camera with my my head sorry if I shook the world the head bump felt around well at least to Brazil <laughs> if, if the Brazil person's still even in here now how did you get started in this media and what tool is that this is a v gouge it is a carving tool 
This is made by Power Grip. And you can find a link to it on my website if you click the link in my profile and go to what do you use page you can find out more information on all that kind of stuff. Um, but how did I get into this? I uh, learned it in school. I was a drawing, painting, and print, make, print making major at Kennesaw State University. I graduated in 2011. I took a printmaking class as one of my, uh, not a, it wasn't an elective, but it was, uh, I don't know. They had a series of classes that were outside of your discipline. It wasn't called, I forget what they called it. Maybe it was an elective. Doesn't matter, you don't care. Um, so I took a printmaking class and enjoyed the process. And I just kept with it. All right, so I need to, I want to get a straight line right here. And that's going to be hard to achieve otherwise, so. And now the tip of the tail. Let's see, Let's start this way. Hello. Rosie Bowdowick. Bowdowick. I probably said that wrong. Guaranteed said that wrong, actually. So. So sorry. So sorry. Is anyone else in here as I finish this one waiting up on a on a carving? A commission piece that you ordered last week if you are and I haven't carved it yet I would be happy to carve it for you as you watch just let me know in the next minute or two as I finish this piece up I'm glad you like it mark thank you little round tool. Tedious work. It is. Little feet. I had to make sure, Mark, that I that I put some feet on for you. And he's going to, let's see, waiting on my unicorn for a classroom because the kids love your artwork. Thank you. And guess what? I haven't carved the unicorn yet. So I will do that now. Unicorn. What kind of wood is it? It's birch. Birch, birch, birch. All right. I got this little unicorn. I got, I put a heart on his butt because aren't unicorns like powered by love or something like that? I think they are. All right. Eyeball. Let's see how I drew this eyeball. Straight line right here. Because that's going to be an eyeball over there. Do you happen to have a hippo? Um, I did a hippo, but it sold. And it is gone. I do not have a hippo in the current pile of works.
How long can you carve before your hands start cramping? Well, I've been carving since about 11 o'clock this morning. I wear the, uh, the glove on my hand so that doesn't start to happen. The one thing that does start to hurt, and right now I'm fine, is that I put a lot of pressure right there in my palm. And so that's why I wear the glove to kind of make that pressure not happen. Hello, Jesse. Make sure that the lines around the eyes are not too heavy. Carving out the nostrils. When I carve like round shapes, what I do first is, can you carve custom artwork? Uh, yes, go to my website. I've got a whole page for commission pieces with a lot of information there. That's the easiest and best way to start that process. Um, this awesome work, may I know what exactly Wait, this is awesome work. May I know what exactly would be the end product? The end pro product is a, uh, it's going to be a small carved and painted piece of wood. And it's gonna be a little piece of art that you can hang on your walls. Just, just little tiny pieces of art. This will be a unicorn. Um, I was talking about carving round shapes. I start by just carving out like a square because it's easy because I a lot of my mark making is straight lines. And then I kind of go around those and round the corners off to make a round shape. I'm going to put a little line here so it doesn't peel. And then I'm going to use my rounded uh, U gouge, my small little U gouge, to go down to create his little confused look on his face. I don't know why I gave him this expression. It seemed fun as I was doing it. Imagine a unicorn would be a lot like deer. If you if you were driving along and you saw a unicorn, they would probably just and the, like it stop like a deer in headlights maybe. I think that's the what I was going for when I made this piece. Shape that line a little bit better. Ear. And then another ear. And now I gotta carve out the corn. 
the unicorn. One single corn, not two corns. One corn. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this eye here too. Give it a bottom shape. Just ever so slightly. There we go. That's better. Alright. I'm working my way to the, to the unicorn rear. What's everyone doing this Friday? Anything interesting? I have to come up with something fun to do tonight. I mean, I don't have to, but it would be nice to. Don't know what that's going to be. But a lot of movie nights around here. Hmm. So I actually really like this unicorn. He may have worked his way into one of my favorite ones. Not that the other ones I don't like. But there's just there's certain mark making. When I when I say I like certain things, it's not because of the design or the drawing, it's because of the mark making that uh, is happening. This one's got some nice mark making. It's hard to do unique mark making in this small space. Because these are very tiny. Gotta carve the heart on his butt. Making sure the comments didn't freeze. It's been a while since I've seen a new comment, which is fine. It means you guys are just hanging out and watching, which is perfectly cool. I'll keep talking. Or maybe they did freeze, and you guys are wondering why I'm not talking about it. And and uh, the answer to that question is because my comments froze. I'm sorry. Car is underbelly. Ours under Bailey. Test. I see it. So someone else has designed you carved out or is that my own drawing? It's my own drawing. Good luck. Bye. Bye, Mata. Now all the comments are coming in again. So 
so they didn't freeze they were there thank you for the test but yeah this is this is my own little drawing I draw and carve it all take this opportunity a little bit of a fun furry texture on the inside of that leg there and then give him his little hoofy hoofs his little hoofy hoof fur so you have them all prepared um I'm going to answer that question how I imagine you're asking. Um, yeah, I, I prepare them. I kind of work on them uh, in stages. Uh, so I, I draw them all out first, and then I prepare them, so to say. And then, then I carve them. So I have a handful that are just over here that are right waiting to get carved. And then I carve them one by one. But yeah, I, I, I do it all. It's just, it's just a drawing on a piece of wood that I carve out. The majestical mane of the unicorn blowing in the wind. And then its tail. So a unicorn is supposed to uh, have the tail of a lion. But this one's so small that I didn't I didn't go and do that. And it also would have looked real stringy too. I gave it a horse tail. So anybody who's like a unicorn. Uh, historian out there my apologies to you this one just got a horse tail how about shaping the blocks and sanding um, I do I do everything I use a scroll saw uh, to get them to size, to shape. And then there's not a whole lot of sanding that's needed with these. But if I did need to sand it, I have the ability to do that as well. But these don't need a whole lot of sanding. All right, a little heart butt. And last but not least, I carve out the hooves. It's just a little bit, it's kind of like a little rhombus shape. Three sided. Not a triangle because this top side's covered with the, the ankle fur. And done. There he is. Ever tired of the same old? Um, not quite sure what that refers to. Let's see what I want to carve now. You same old process, just kind of working. There's a, there's a lot of parts of my process. I'll answer. I'll answer that. Uh, let's see. How do I answer it? There's 
there's a lot of parts to my process uh, that I go through. I go drawing, carving, painting, printing, uh, ideas, like actually making, cutting out wood. So it's not really like the same old, same old. I do a lot of different things. So I guess the answer would probably be no. Yay, I'm so sad. Thanks for carving. Was that this was this was your unicorn, yay? Yay. I'm glad you could watch. I'll try to save the video if I have enough space on my phone. Bat's already done. There's the bat. Um I'll try to save the video if there's enough space on my phone and then maybe post it to YouTube so that your classroom kids can check it out too. Hopefully there's enough space on my phone. Fingers crossed for that. <laughs> Sometimes there's not. What's the cost to purchase one of these little small ones? Um, I've been selling these online for $30. Um, these are currently, a lot, some of these are avail will be available. Um, some of them will not be because they're already purchased. Last week I did a, uh, a limited opening of tiny carving commissions. So, some of them will be available, some will not be. The unicorn is not available, this cactus is not available. Let's see. I'm so excited, it's an anniversary gift from my husband, yay! Pangleon in the mail, yay! Always a good mail day. I think I got another question that I skipped over. That'd be cool, and I can, let's see. I can link to the Google Classroom and share it with them. It'd be great, if not, no biggie. Um. If you want to message me later today, at some point when this goes off, I will know at that point if I was able to share it or not, and then it'll get uploaded next week at some point, if it is. That would be cool though, to, to link it to your Google Classroom and so they can watch. I should have asked again. I know JJ Damari um, was looking for the bat, but that was carved. Is there anyone else in here waiting for a, a specific piece? to see carved maybe that you ordered last week. I can I can go to that one next after this one. If you are knocking these right out. Yes. They, they happen quite quickly, not, not as quickly as I would like sometimes, but they happen quite quickly. I'd say the carving portion of each one probably takes me 10 to 15 minutes per, per one. And then I paint them and ink them. Adorable hippo if I have it. I don't have an adorable hippo right now. I did a hippo in the first batch of them. Maybe I'll do another little hippo, but there's no hippo in this set of carvings. I'm trying to think even what the closest to that I would have. I have an elephant. 
but no hippo. How about names and lettering? Um, what do you mean? Like, have I ever carved them out, or do I have any pieces that are names and lettering? Like, I've carved out letters before. I don't do it quite often because it's not a super clean look with the with my woodcut technique. There's other people who can get it done and make it look real clean. Uh, that's not really who I am. But I've done words and letters before. It's the second one in a row with a heart. This one's not on its butt, though. This one's on its base. It's pot. It's front. Flower time. First, I do a little bit of a circle here. And then do the petals. But make sure I don't peel up the edge.
Roughly how long have you been doing this for a hobby? Well, um, this is my full-time deal. It's definitely not a hobby. I'm a full-time artist. I do a lot of different things. Wood carving is a significant amount portion of that. And I have been doing it since, I've been carving since about 2008, I would say. And I've been working full time as an artist since 2011, which is when I graduated from school from Kennesaw State University. Hello, good evening from Kuwait. Well, good afternoon from Atlanta. It is 2.26 here in the afternoon, like I already said. All right, now time to pull out the little little circle bits. Nine twenty seven from in Kuwait. So you guys are quite a bit of ahead of us. Right. This little cactus is finished. I'll see if I can get one more in before Instagram kicks me off for for doing it for an hour. I know I'm getting close, but one more. Let's see, make it a small one. I had a hamburger over here earlier. There's my hamburger. 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 Let's do a hamburger. Well, it's actually a cheeseburger if you want to get uh, technical. Because it has cheese on it. Hamburger. Cheeseburger. Birder, birder, birder. Hamburger. Carving a hamburger. The bun's got sesame seeds on it. Custom order for this one? This one is one of the ones that will be available once they are finished. This one was not a commission. This one was one of mine that I decided to make. So this is one of the 16 that will be available whenever they're all done, which I don't know when that's going to be. I imagine next week at some point, maybe depends on when I get them inked. Cause I take a couple days to dry after I get them inked. Hey, 
and murder. It's been a while since I've had a good hamburger. Might be one of the things that I want to do, like as soon as I know we can still like go out to restaurants and stuff, but it's not the same. We found earlier this year. Thank you, thank you. Um, thanks, Mark. Earlier this year, we found a good place up in. Uh, probably about an 45 minutes north of where I live in a place called Jasper, Georgia. And it's called Quick Burger. And they just have like really good burgers. And it would be nice to go back there. It's just like this little hole in the wall place. It looks like it used to be like a, like a CVS or something. And then it closed it, th that closed down and Quick Burger which is a little, little family-owned burger place opened up in its spot. And they just have good homemade stuff. They have a pimento. I think it's called the uh, Ball Ground Burger, which is a Ball Ground's a city up here in in Georgia too. And it's got homemade pimento cheese on it. Waffle House for life. Waffle House is good too. You only eat Waffle House when it's like really late though. They got Waffle Houses up in New Jersey. I know it's a Atlanta thing. Yeah, no, I got myself craving a burger, too. I don't know Waffle Houses are in other places, but uh, Atlanta. I just don't know how far they go. Oh, no Waffle Houses. In New Jersey. Alright, so this is the lettuce. Waffle House and IHOP. And the further south, the better. Maybe one on the border. Yeah, there's stuff here that we don't have in Atlanta. Like, we don't have White Castle. We have Crystals, which is not quite the same. I've had White Castle once in my life and it was delicious. It was in a, a road trip on the way to Chicago. We stopped in Kentucky and got a Crave case. They're called Crave cases, right? Whatever it's called. We got the, the big the big case of all the of all the Crystals burgers and we ate that for like the next couple of days. It was delicious. That was a couple years ago now. It's at least I don't know man. Probably eight years ago at this point. I think that was 2013. So maybe seven years. What else don't we have here? Obviously, we don't have like in and outs. But you guys don't have in and out up there in New Jersey either. Or up north. Because I don't know where uh, Best Bet Photos is. I 
We just started getting Denny's here. By just started, I mean within the past like five years, I guess some Denny's have been starting to open up in the area. That's a tomato. New York, New Jersey. Oh, you guys are both New York, New Jersey. Cool. And this is another piece of a lettuce on the bottom here. Hello, Ag Hasi. Can color be added to the carving? It will be uh, later, yes. And I just do that with paint. But yes, these will have color added to it. So the cheese will be yellow and the tomato will be red and the lettuce will be green and the bun will be like a, a bun color. So yes, these will be in full color. Do you have a finished product close by? Uh, I don't. I have to walk over to my little storage area to do that. Which I can do in a second if you would like me to. Now I just want to get into those little uh, little seeds up here, the sesame seeds. these off a little bit more they're kind of square still I was afraid of rounding them off too early because I was gonna make them really worry about making them too small let me just round off these corners real quick All right. Be afraid of breaking the seeds, carving them out. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. So I'm gonna put all the ones that I carved during this session and hang them out here. And then I'm gonna go grab a finished run real quick. I grabbed this one because it was Mark's. This one's coming to Mark soon. 
But that is a finished version of these. They all start off looking the same. So, um, but I know I've been on here for more than an hour carving because it's now 2.41. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to sign off, go uh, get something, take a little bit of a break, and then come back to carve later. Um, but thank you guys for watching, enjoying, and hanging out with me. I will see you guys later. Woohoo! Thanks, Mark. Thanks, uh, Best Bet Photo, for hanging out. And I'm signing off.